Hello, Stats Fanatics. Welcome to Chapter 9, Testing a Claim. This is Section 9.1 on Significance Test, and we're just going to look at the basics today. Some of the things we'll be able to learn, we're going to learn about what's called a null and an alternative hypothesis uh, for a significance test. Uh, it's a new procedure for evaluating a claim. And we're going to look at it about a population parameter. And again, our population parameters we've been dealing with are P for population proportion and mu for population mean. We're going to learn about a p-value, and we're going to remind ourselves a little bit about statistical significance, and then we'll learn a little bit about type 1 and type 2 error, and be able to give a consequence of each. So as an introduction, confidence intervals. Confidence intervals is what we've been looking at back in chapter 8. They are one of the two most common types of statistical inference. So again, statistical inference is what we're looking at. It's a major, major portion, about 25% of the AP exam. So we use a confidence interval when our goal is to estimate a population parameter. And that's what we did back in Chapter 8. The second most common type of inference is called significance tests, or significance testing. It has a different goal, and it's to assess the evidence provided by data about some claim concerning a population. So in other words, what we're going to do is somebody's going to make a claim, they claim that something is true in the population, and we're going to collect some data about that and either prove or support the idea that was claimed. So as it says here, a significance test is a formal procedure for comparing observed data, so in other words, sample data that we collect, with a claim. Uh, so that's about a population. Okay, so this claim is about population data. Or it's a hypothesis. The claim is a statement about a parameter, <coughs> like the population proportion P, or the population mean mu. So when we express the results of a stimulus test in terms of probably a uh, little measure, how well the data and the claim agree. In other words, how well the sample and the population agree with each other. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to look at a quick little game uh, that you can find on Launchpad. So I'll exit uh, this, the PowerPoint here. And we'll go to our Launchpad book, and this is at the beginning, the introduction section of chapter 9. If you scroll down a couple pages, you'll see this link. You'll click on this link over here. Statistical applets over here. And the applet we want is the, the reasoning of a statistical test. <coughs> Excuse me again. So what this applet does is uh, it's going to have a free throw shooter uh, actually go to the line and shoot. There's a claim that uh, the team shoots 80%. That they make 8 out of 10 of their free throws from the line on average. <coughs> so we don't know what that true probability is. Uh, we could click this and show it, but we're going to try to see if we can guess at it. By putting the player on the line and shooting. So we shoot 10. See what happens here. You can see that percentage as it goes along in time. Not looking too good right now. Uh, right now it looks like maybe they're only a 50% free throw shooter, but this is a small sample size, so we'll have them shoot another 10. <coughs> kind of watch as this goes on. And then maybe even another 10. So we're going to get a, a sample of 30 shots here. And to me what it looks like here is that maybe this is kind of zeroing in on maybe 60%. So I'd have kind of evidence against uh, the claim that they uh, say that their team is 80%. I show that true probability. In fact, look at it. It's even a 50% free throw shooter. So we're trying to see by collecting evidence, do we have enough evidence to su uh, either support the claim <coughs> or to reject their claim? So let's go back to the PowerPoint. So a significance test starts with a careful statement of the claims we want to compare. We have what's called a null hypothesis, abbreviated H sub 
zero. Uh, often it's a statement of no difference, or what I like to say is a statement of equality, because if you have no difference, you should have equality. The claim about the population that we're trying to find evidence for is the alternative. And that's abbreviated H sub A. So in our problem, <coughs> excuse me, we were presented with the claim that uh, the team, uh, the individuals on the team were 80% free throw shooters, that their population portion is equal to uh, 80%. And we're kind of skeptical, and we kind of maybe say that, eh, I don't think they're that good. Um, so I'm going to say that there were less than 80%. That's the alternative. If I'm trying to find evidence uh, for this, that would be evidence against this one. So there's some basics of parameters uh, and uh, where we... Uh, how we establish which one is the null and which one's the alternative hypothesis. A null hypothesis will always have some form of equality. Will always have some form of equality uh, in the problem. Where the alternative hypotheses don't have equality. They're either less than, greater than, or not equal to. And uh, to determine that correct form of an alternative hypothesis, you got to read the problem carefully. So look to see, are they saying that, hey, the team says they're an 80% free throw shooter. I believe they're not as good. Well, then I would be using uh, this one right here. Or maybe the other way around. If they're an 80% free throw sh shooting team, i say, no, 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 they're better than that. Well, that's the one I'd be using for the alternative. Or if I'm just trying to say, you know, that, uh, well, I don't think they're an 80% free throw shooter. I just think it's different than that. That'd be this one. So, uh, an alter so we, an alternative hypothesis, if it's one of these two right here, if it's just greater than or, or less than, uh, that is a one-sided uh, hypothesis. If it's this one down here, if it's not equal to, that's called a two-sided, because it could be either greater than or less than, uh, where these other ones are just on one side. So some basics. The hypothesis should express the hopes or suspicions we have before we see the data. It is cheating to look at the data first and then frame a hypothesis to fit what the data shows. So again, my hope is that the team is an 80% free throw shooter. I might have some suspicions that they're less than uh, 80%. Uh, so um, Hypotheses always refer to a population, always, 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 always to a population out and to that, whatever that population parameter is. And the ones we know again are P or mu. It does not refer to a sample. So be for sure to uh, state the null and alternative hypotheses with population parameters. As we see below, it's never correct, never correct to write something like this where the null hypothesis is p hat equals 0 0.64. Never, 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 never do that. That's a, that's a statistic. It should always be a parameter uh, equaling whatever the value is, or vice versa over here. Uh, never, 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 never say x bar equals 85, because that's not a parameter. This is not a parameter. Mu is the parameter that we'd be trying to estimate on. So let's suppose that basketball player claimed to be an 80% free throw shooter. To test this claim, what we do is we have him shoot 50 free throws, because again, the more the better. He makes 32 of them. So his sample proportion, his p hat, his p hat here is 0.64. So that's the question. Is that far enough away for us to say, no, hey, buddy, you're not an 80% free throw shooter? Or is that close enough to say, ah, I just, I can't, I can't reject your claim. You're, you, you are an 80% free throw shooter. So we could use some software to kind of create a distribution of that, to create a sampling distribution. I could have 400, uh, have the player do this 400 times or have the team do it 400 times, uh, where they each shoot 50 shots. And uh, what we can do is then plot that. So these are uh, 400 dots where each player shot 50 
uh, free throws and recorded their percentage. Our guy here at 64% <coughs> was right here. And uh, as we can see, there's only him and two others that are at him or below. So that's only three out of the 400 uh, that uh, had that percentage. You know, if they're truly an 80% free throw shooter, you know, I'm looking at this and saying that this is kind of far away. This is really a small probability. And if we think about statistical significance, if we have a small uh, small probability of something happening, uh, we have statistical significance against that claim. So our observed statistic is so unlikely, it's such a small probability uh, if, the, if the actual parameter, if it's truly 0.8. So that gives us convincing evidence that the player's claim is not true. So that probability is so small of shooting 0.64, shooting 64% when he should be 80%, that I don't think that could have occurred by chance. So I think that's got evidence against that saying that, nope, I don't think you're a 0.80 or an 80% free throw shooter. So there are two explanations for this fact. Uh, the player's claim is, you know, if the player's claim is correct, they could not, they could not get 0.8 just by chance. Um, but more likely in this case, the alternative hypothesis is correct, uh, that the population portion is actually less than 0.8. So their claim of being 0.8 is probably not true because that statistic of uh, the statistical significance uh, was really, really small, so I think I've got evidence against this claim. So the basic idea is if an outcome that would rarely happen, in other words, if a very small probability of something happening when the null hypothesis were true, it's good evidence that the null hypothesis is not true. So we can do this with p-values. And the null hypothesis states the claim that we are seeking evidence against. The probability that measures the strength of the evidence against null hypothesis is called the p-value. That 3 out of 400, uh, that's a p-value. The probability, computed assuming null is true, that the statistic would take a value as extreme as or more extreme than the one actually observed is called the p-value of the test. That's why I counted all three of those from the ones at 0.64 and less, there were three of those that were there or more extreme. And we've kind of known this before. Small p-values are evidence against the, the null hypothesis. So we usually lose at about a 5% level before. And if there was small, smaller than 5%, uh, we would say we have statistical significance and say that couldn't have occurred by chance and that that claim is not right. Large p-values, generally even saying about 5%. Uh, fail to give convincing evidence against somebody's claim. So again, statistical significance, as I've alluded to, uh, we make one of two decisions based on that p-value, that strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis. We either reject the null or fail to reject the null. Okay. Failing to reject the null doesn't mean that it is true. It doesn't mean that it's true. So that what I want I don't ever want to hear you say that you accept. Don't use that word accept. Uh, you know, say uh, that you fail to reject. So in a nutshell, small p values reject the null. You have convincing evidence for the alternative. If you have large p values, you're going to fail to reject the null, and you're not going to have convincing evidence for the alternative. So there's no rule for how small a p-value we should require in order to reject null, but we can compare the p-value with a fixed value that regards decisive, called the significance level. We write that as alpha, the Greek letter alpha. And the p-value, if the p-value is smaller than the alpha, we say that the data are statistically significant at level alpha. In that case, we reject the null hypothesis, include that there is convincing evidence in favor of the alternative. So we don't always have to use 5%. We can set that alpha level at whatever we want. Most of the time it is 5%, but you can certainly set it at 10% or any other level. And again, there's our reminder.